Welcome to Calvary Temple Church, here in the heart of downtown Winnipeg. Calvary Temple is people, people of all generations and all nations. Stay tuned for a message of hope and encouragement. Jesus is the ticket to heaven. I want you to think of the words of Ronnie Millsap's song. You can buy a ticket for Paris. You can buy a ticket for Rome. You can buy a ticket for London. But you can't buy a ticket for your heavenly home. Ronnie Millsap was a country singer, a very well-known, uh, lots of gold records, 35 million records sold. But what many people don't know about him, that he was born blind, and his parents rejected him. In fact, they thought he was cursed by God, so his grandparents raised him. And they actually sent him to a school where he stayed, a boarding school for the blind. And early in his life, he came to a real realization that Jesus could be his personal savior. Didn't always follow the Lord closely, but in the 1980s, he wrote a song that Southern Gospel groups got a hold of. Jesus is the ticket for heaven. I want to ask you today, do you believe it? How do you put a dollar value on it? Can you really know that? Can you really count on it? Does, does it really make sense? Is, is it reliable? Well, I want to help us all today by grasping the value of your ticket, your ticket to heaven. And it's found in the Bible. It's very clear. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Now, most of us memorize this as children in the King James Version of the Bible, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I want you to notice the words, God loved. He gave everyone who believes, and it says everyone who believes, will not perish but have eternal life. I want you to know that these are the most central words of the entire Bible. You can bank on these words. You can put your whole life on these words. Now, I know that we live in a world that is pluralistic, and people love to redefine God. And here's how they do it. They say things like, oh, oh, I believe God, and I believe in God, but the God I believe in isn't like the God you believe in. I believe in a God who, and then they fill in the blanks. And they fill it in as they see fit, whatever seems right to them, whatever wisdom they have. And the attitude is, in our world, truth isn't the issue. Who cares if it's true? As long as it makes me feel better, and then I say, no, 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 no. The God that I believe in, he is this and this and this. So I want to ask you today, if you're looking for truth, truth that matters, Truth that has to do with eternal things. Truth that has to do with heaven. It was amazing to me that on Friday morning at 7.36 a.m., I got a text from our third daughter, Wendell Lee. And she said to me in the text, after a week of missing the earlier bus, I realized this morning that my app was set backwards, showing my times to go west rather than east on Sargent. And for three days in a row, I missed my bus because in my app, I was looking at the wrong information. It was going the wrong direction. And then, in her wisdom, she wrote this to her dad. No matter how good my intentions were, if I'm calibrated incorrectly, I will not go, get to go where I need to go on time. 
And I want to say to all of us today, in the same way Jesus is the ticket to heaven, and if we're going to get there and get there on time, we need to know what the ticket is. So knowing why he's more than just another God. Is Jesus just one of the pluralistic gods of the world and all gods are equal? Well, let me talk for a moment. I'm going to try as hard as I can to be objective in this discussion about Christianity. But I want to say that Christianity is like no other world religion. Yes, we believe in one God, but he exists eternally, and that means he's had no beginning and no ending. So our God was not created by anybody or anything. He exists eternally in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now I want to make it very clear to those watching by television, those sitting and watching the website, I want you to know that we don't create God. We don't recreate God. We don't change God. He exists eternally. He has revealed himself to us. We do not change him. We do not modify him. And so I want to ask the question based on this wonderful passage in John 3.16. Why Jesus is the ticket. We're going to look through this verse today. God loved the world. Love is a funny word. Have you ever noticed that? I love popcorn with melted blue cheese drizzled over it. That's one of the things that I say. And then there's the old, I, I love my grandson, Hurley. Well, you know that if I say I love Hurley, then I need to say I love Aubrey and Liam and Cooper and Roxy. The only person that can have favorites is great grandma. And she says, oh, I would never say it, and then she says it. <laughs> or I love the Jets, or I love the Bombers, or I love, I love, whatever. But what does the Bible mean when it says God loved? God loved. There's a Greek word that's used in the Greek culture, and there's at least four, there's more, but at least four, and there's that word philio, which means the way you love a friend. And Jesus said, I've called you friends. So there's that kind of love. There's storge, which is family devotion kind of love. And Jesus invites us to have the same father, and he wants to be our elder brother. So there's, there's that kind of love. And then there's eros, erotic love, or maybe better said, romantic love. And that sounds a bit strange, but it, when, you, when you look at the New Testament and it says that the church is the bride of Christ, well, may, maybe there's a place for that love too. But the word that's used in this New Testament verse that we've looked at today is agape. In John 3.16, it is a giving love, a sacrificing love, love that pays the price for others. How does God love us? in the gospel. How does that work? He loved the world so much that he gave his son for the sins of the world. Now here's a verse, likely the most important verse I'll put on the screen today, is this verse. God showed his great love for us, for you, for me, for every person in the world, by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. While we wanted nothing to do with him, God sent his son to die for us. Have you heard it said, Jesus would have died just for you and you. He died for the whole world, but he died for individuals. So I want you to note that God's love is a giving love. A giving love. I find it interesting that in the Bible that I learned as a child, the King James Version, 
1 Corinthians 13, and now abideth faith, hope, and charity. That's the word agape. That's the word for love. And the translators in that day said, yes, if, if you're receiving from God, he's giving. And if you love the way God loves, you con- you're concerned about the poor, you're concerned about those who have lost their way. Agape, charity. These three, the greatest of these is charity. So yes, Jesus is the ticket. How is Jesus the ticket? Well, he gave his one and only son. How did he give his son? That's a great question. The one who eternally existed with the Father from the foundation of the world. Rewind Christmas. Think about the manger. The one who had existed from eternity as three persons became flesh. The creator of the universe became a fertilized egg, a fetus in Mary's womb. The father sent his son into the world knowing that he would be mocked, he would be misunderstood till the day he would be nailed to the cross. Jealous and wicked people would reject him. All kinds of terrible things would happen to him. Plot, mocking, scourging, beating, stripping, nailing to the worst execution device known in that world. And here's how John said it. Man, this is a great verse. God showed how much he loved you and me by sending his one and only Son in the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. If you're a seeker here today, I want you to notice the word love. God loved. God loved. God sent his son. This is real love. Not that we love, but that he first loved us. Wow. You see, on the cross, Jesus suffered the Father's wrath against all sin. And we've all sinned. I know I've sinned. I remember as a teenager working at a Christian camp, my parents were running the kitchen and I got to work in the tuck shop. And I can remember as a 13, 14-year-old stealing money out out of the till. I'm so glad that when Jesus died, he covered my stupidity as a kid. Now, later in the week, I felt bad about it, and then I didn't know how much I had taken, and I gave everything I had back. That's the kind of repentance that that God's into. Do you know that uh, every sin that's ever committed, the sin of Hitler, the sin of ISIS, the sin of you avoiding income tax, every sin that anyone has ever committed was covered by Jesus when he was forsaken on the cross. I heard it put this way. I'd never heard it before. Jesus suffered the fatherlessness of the Son, and God also suffered the sonlessness of the Father. Sin separated them. And the giving that saves us today costs. It's absolutely true. It cost heaven everything. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Is this all that important? Does it matter that Jesus died? Why does it matter? Why do we need a ticket for heaven? Why, 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 why? so that everyone who believes in him will not perish. Will not perish. I would not be true to the gospel if I didn't tell you this this morning. There were big stakes involved when Jesus died on that cross. Big stakes for all of us, that none of us would perish. 
What does perish mean? Well, it does mean die, but it means more than that. Perish comes, we, we would use the word perishable. Perishables in your fridge like vegetables and fruit and meat and dairy. And what happens when they perish? You go into the fridge just before they start to crawl and you get them out of there and you throw them in the garbage. Now that doesn't happen at our house because everything gets thrown out based on a best before date. And uh, I say, where's my favorite? So it's outdated, out of here. But most people it has to do with perishable so I want to talk about the word perish for a moment. Lost from intended purpose. Where do we take things that perish? We take them to the garbage. They go to a dump. See, the people in Jerusalem had a place they used as a dump. It was called the Valley of Hinnom. We know it as Gehenna. And it's the basis of this biblical idea of hell. It's what Jesus was trying to convey. And this place, this Gehenna, the stench of rotting food was there, and animal carcasses, and the fire burning the garbage was there, overwhelming, filled with maggots and worms, and Jesus describes hell as this place of fire and maggots and worms. Notice in Mark's Gospel, this is Jesus' words, not my words. It's in the Bible. It's in everybody's Bible. Thrown into hell, everlasting fire, Gehenna, speaking of that dump, where the maggots never die and the fire never goes out. And then I realized that he was quoting from the prophet Isaiah. For the worms that devour them will never die and the fire that burns will never go out. Now you need to know that I am a very compassionate guy. And I ask the question, why in the world is this in the Bible? And why in the world would God do this? And I want to tell you something that you may not know. But I want to say it from the bottom of my heart, because I truly believe this. God never sends anyone to hell. He never intended to. He doesn't want to. But the truth is that since Adam and Eve, we are all perishable items. We were born in sin. We were shapened in sin. We are sinners by birth. We are sinners by choice. And I know some people find that very, very difficult to understand. But I tell you, I've got five grandkids. And you just spend a half hour with those two oldest and you'll find out that mine, no, uh, mm, mm. I mean, you almost have to pull them apart some days. Because inside every single one of us is self-centeredness. We are all needing a Savior, every single one of us. God sent his Son into the world, not, hear it, not to condemn the world, but that the world by him should be saved. Jesus, the Son, is the ticket to heaven. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God has devised a plan. His name is Jesus, and no one needs to perish. Hallelujah. He is the one that's given by God. So love. He cares for you and your family and everybody. So the good news is you can avoid the garbage heap of eternity. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you can avoid the garbage heap of eternity. And my friend, I want you to know, especially those listening by television, there's more to this than avoiding hell. Some people look on salvation as sort of a ticket out of hell. I want to encourage you to optimize your ticket. Optimize your ticket. Notice, 
but have eternal life. That's the word zoe. And that word can start now. You don't have to wait for heaven. You can actually experience eternal life now. This is what the scriptures say. No eye has seen, nor ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. I know some people say, oh, heaven, that's a boring place. People floating on pillows and playing harps. I I don't want anything to do with that. I want you to look at this verse. No, it's greater than anything you could imagine. See, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy, but my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life here and now and forever. Hallelujah. I've had people over the years, I've been doing this for a while, I've had people come to me and say, you know, I I really don't want to go to heaven because all my friends are going to be in hell and that's where I want to go. And I just want to say to you from my heart, maybe you're with a friend today, maybe you're a guest, maybe you have no idea why you're watching this program. Don't take my word for it. Jesus was trying to describe something that he knew was real. And he looked at the burning dump, the decay, the rot, the worms. And he said, I have come that you need not perish. I have come so the rot in your life can stop. And the devil's greatest trick is to tell people that they've made too many mistakes, your past is too difficult, too many people know about your sin and your failure, and God doesn't care about you anymore, and you are too evil to be redeemed. Nothing further from the truth could be said. Every person, this verse applies, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I've got good news. Starts now. It starts now. The decay, the self centeredness, the worn out religion, whatever is making you sick, I tell you the truth. Those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me, do you see it? Have eternal life, present tense. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death into life. Hallelujah. Never condemned for their sins. Nobody's going to come up to me and say, remember when you were 13 years old at Brayside Camp, you little thief? Thank you, Jesus. And I don't know what it is for you, but you have something in your life that haunts you, and I want you to know the ticket to heaven includes that for everyone here today. So activate your ticket now. It's right in the verse. So that everyone who believes in him, believes in him, doesn't say if you try and act like a Christian. It doesn't say if you fool your mother long enough so she thinks you are one. It says if you choose to believe. And I'm going to ask you to believe today. I'm going to ask you to open your heart to the Lord. He took all the rot, all the shame, all the decay, all the pretend, every despicable thing that you've ever done or thought and took it upon himself. And that's called grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. And if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us. Look at this verse from the book of Acts. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Believe. Put your full weight down. Put your full weight down on Jesus. Every thought, every failure, every regret, everything you've ever done, put it down on Jesus. 
And he will give you eternal life. And it will start now. You don't have to join this church. You don't have to go through classes. It starts by believing. I believe. And then you go through classes. Then you learn about all the wonderful passages of Scripture that you can embrace for yourself. And you can begin the adventure of living the Christian life. I want to encourage you that are watching today. I'm going to pray a prayer at the end of this program, and so be sure and stay there by the TV, by the website, and I'm going to pray for you in just a moment. But I want to take a moment for those of you who are here today. I want you to know that you don't have to guess. You don't have to hope. The Bible says you can know that you have eternal life. And so the truth, Jesus is the ticket. He's not one of many tickets. He's the ticket. And he is available for every single person here today. And I just want to encourage you to pray with me in just a moment. As I pray with those on the television. I would like to take this opportunity to pray with you personally. Have you ever considered accepting Jesus into your heart? Becoming a believer, a follower, one who lives out their faith? I would like to pray with you today, as I have with many here at Calvary Temple. You simply say, Lord, I'm sorry. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross, and please come into my heart. Please join me now. Thank you, God, for all of those watching today who would like to receive Jesus into their heart. We're sorry for our sin and our past failure, and we thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for every one of us. And please come into my heart, Lord Jesus. God bless you if you've prayed that prayer and meant it. Thank you so much. And find a good Bible-believing church and be sure and tell other people that you've invited Jesus into your heart. God bless you and thank you for watching today. Pastor Martin would like to send you a copy of the book he gives to those he prays with at the close of every gathering. This book will help you discover an abundant life through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. To request your copy of the Abundant Life New Testament, write to us, visit us online, or call us toll free. Thank you for your faithful support. Please remember, it's your financial partnership that helps us present this program week by week. One of the most frequently asked questions is, can anyone come to Calvary Temple? The answer is yes. 440 Hargrave Street here in the heart of Winnipeg, everyone is welcome from all faiths and backgrounds of all ages. I encourage you to look at the website, ctwinnipeg.com, and find a service time that suits you, whether traditional or contemporary. I'll be looking forward to seeing you. God bless you.